Get ready for a roller coaster of emotions with the 1937 film Nothing Sacred. This classic movie packs in plenty of humor, shocking moments, and heart wrenching scenes that will keep you glued to your seat. Have you ever wondered when you first watched this movie? Or perhaps you have a favorite character in it? Share your thoughts with us. We'd love to hear about your cherished memories or personal experiences related to this timeless gem. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride as we delve into the world of nothing sacred. Many funny, shocking, and sad facts are coming up, so keep watching this video for more. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Nothing Sacred, a film released in the 1930s, delves into the world of modern celebrity, portraying its darker and more pathetic aspects. Ben Heck's script explores the gullibility of sophisticates, especially those residing in cities like New York. The protagonist, Wally, finds himself relegated to the obituary column, mirroring the challenges of the era, while Hazel Flagg, a young woman from a New England town, becomes the focal point of the story. Hazel, diagnosed with radium poisoning, is offered a chance to experience New York City in exchange for her story. Unbeknownst to her, her diagnosis is a mistake, yet she eagerly embraces the opportunity to escape her small town. As the media amplifies her false celebrity status, she and Wally fall in love. The comedy unfolds as Hazel grapples with the dilemma of revealing her newfound health to Wally. While some humor in the film may feel dated, nothing sacred stands the test of time, showcasing Carol Lombard's exceptional performance in the screwball comedy genre, complemented by March's rare comic role. Remade in 1954 as a comedy starring Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, she played the role originally portrayed by Carol Lombard, while he took on the role of the doctor. The film was re-released in 1945, but without the original Technicolor printing, instead opting for the cheaper Cinecolor process. For the next 40 years, viewers watched the film in this inferior format until its Technicolor restoration in the 1980s. Both Nothing Sacred and another Technicolor production, A Star is Born, were directed by William O. Wellman and starred Frederick March in the same year. Despite critical acclaim, Nothing Sacred failed to achieve commercial success, unlike its counterpart which spawned multiple remakes. In a scene featuring a bearded doctor from Vienna, a notable actor takes center stage as he meticulously examines a character, ensuring a thorough assessment of her potential radium poisoning. Remarkably, this actor's contribution to this particular scene remains uncredited, yet his later claim to fame in another movie echoes through cinematic history. The allure of the movie extends beyond its individual scenes, earning it a place among the distinguished movies nominated for America's greatest love stories. As the narrative unfolds, viewers find themselves drawn into the magnetic chemistry between the characters, transcending the boundaries of conventional storytelling. Furthermore, this cinematic gem holds a prestigious French visa number, a testament to its global recognition and appeal. The intricacies of its narrative, coupled with the stellar performances of its cast, have left a lasting impression on the world of cinema. In the grand array of Hollywood classics, this movie stands as a timeless example of storytelling, captivating audiences across generations. The rich array of characters, their interwoven relationships, and the exploration of love make it a lasting piece of cinematic brilliance. So, whether one revisits this classic for its engaging plot or marvels at the subtle nuances of the characters, it continues to be a cinematic treasure, etching its place in the hearts of movie enthusiasts worldwide. Entering the film scene in 1937, Betty Miles debuted in a significant project that left a mark on cinematic history. This particular film was dear to Carol Lombard, a prominent figure in the industry. Lombard held it close to her heart, considering it one of her top picks. Betty Miles kicked off her career with this movie, which was not only a personal milestone, but also a groundbreaking one for its genre. It was the first screwball comedy to be filmed in color, a departure from the usual black and white. This decision added a new dimension to the film, making it visually striking compared to others of its time. To sum up, in 1937, Betty Miles made her film debut in a project that Carol Lombard held dear. This movie was notable for being the first screwball comedy shot in color, marking a significant advancement in cinematic technology. This movie's runtime falls short of the modern standard for feature films, being under 75 minutes. If released in 2018, it wouldn't meet the required length of at least 80 minutes. While Wally persuades Hazel to accompany him to New York City, a notable detail on the sidewalk catches the eye. A poster featuring a skier adorns the wooden fencing. This specific poster, known as the Mont Rivarda Col de Ski poster, holds value among collectors, with an original in good condition fetching around $3,000 in 2020. 
Interestingly, Sig Ruman portrays Dr. Emil Egelhofer, the same character in the 1953 Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis remake of this storyline titled Living It Up. The continuity of character portrayal across different adaptations adds a layer of connection between the original film and its later reinterpretation. In a bygone era of cinema, a gravel-voiced editor named Oliver Stone, portrayed by Walter Connolly, took center stage in the 1937 film. The narrative unfolds with Stone at the helm of the Morning Star, steering the course of the plot with his distinctive voice. The film also features a pivotal scene where Hazel and Wally face the disapproval of a snooty society matron. This character, played by a once prominent actress facing a downturn in her career, later found fame as the face of Hedda Hopper's Hollywood. In 1938, her column debuted in the Los Angeles Times, soon becoming a widely syndicated gossip source, rivaling Loella Parsons. However, the journey of Nothing Sacred took an unexpected turn. The original copyright holder's failure to renew the film's copyright allowed it to slip into the public domain. Consequently, numerous versions surfaced in the market, marred by poor quality and hasty edits from second or third generation copies. The Walt Disney Company, having acquired the Selznick collection, restored the film, yet this enhanced version remains elusive on DVD. In this cinematic odyssey, Oliver Stone's gravel voice resonates, accompanied by the echoes of a once-renowned actress and the challenges faced in preserving the film's integrity. The twists and turns of fate, from public domain pitfalls to the restoration efforts by Disney, paint a unique tapestry of the 1937 classic. In the film, boxer Maxi Rosenblum, also an actor, provided boxing lessons to Carol Lombard before her on-screen bout with Frederick March. Finnish Video Censorship Certificate T21-T5 and 92 was issued on September 9, 1993. Notably, the town of Warsaw VT, where the events unfold, is entirely fictional. It serves as a backdrop for the comedic and satirical elements of the story. These details add depth and authenticity to the narrative, creating a vibrant and engaging viewing experience. In a scene set against a picket fence in Warsaw, a surprising twist unfolds as a little boy darts out to sink his teeth into Frederick March's leg. The unexpected assailant, however, is none other than the accomplished midget actor Billy Barty. Originally earmarked for Janet Gaynor, the role of Hazel Flagg underwent a change of plans after the success of A Star is Born in 1937. Carol Lombard stepped into the character's shoes, delivering a compelling performance. Yet, the intensity spilled off screen during a fight scene with Frederick March, necessitating Lombard to take a day off for recovery from the inflicted scratches and bruises. In the world of nothing sacred, unexpected moments behind the scenes, from the bite of a little boy to the unplanned physical toll on Lombard, reveal the dynamic and unscripted nature of filmmaking. In Nothing Sacred, Carol Lombard's hair appears reddish blonde due to Technicolor's limitations. David O. Selznick's name is prominently featured six times in the film's credits. The movie was first televised in 1944 on New York City's WMBT, but its landmark broadcast with a commercial break occurred in 1948. Subsequent broadcasts followed in various cities across the United States, all in black and white. In the fascinating story of a Hollywood collaboration, a talented screenwriter, Ben Hecht, tailored a role for his close companion, John Barrymore. However, a formidable producer, David O. Selznick, objected to hiring Barrymore due to the actor's well-documented struggles with alcohol abuse. Hecht, in response to Selznick's decision, took a principled stand and refused to make further revisions to the script, choosing to sever ties with the project. This unexpected departure cast a shadow over the production, creating a palpable void that needed to be filled. Interestingly, the film's leading lady, Carol Lombard, assumes top billing, but doesn't appear on screen until a notable 16 minutes into the unfolding story. This delayed entrance adds suspense and intrigue, leaving the audience eagerly anticipating Lombard's eventual appearance. Despite behind-the-scenes challenges, the movie managed to secure its place in cinematic history. The American Film Institute recognized its comedic brilliance, including it in their prestigious 2000 list of the 500 movies nominated for the top 100 funniest American movies. This acknowledgement speaks to the charm and wit embedded in the screenplay, even amid the turbulence surrounding its creation. Looking back, this film stands as a testament to the unpredictable dynamics of Hollywood, where creative clashes and unexpected turns can shape a movie's destiny. The convergence of talent, controversy, and the pursuit of humor results in a cinematic experience that transcends production challenges. Carol Lombard brought color to the big screen in her only Technicolor film, showcasing a beautiful range of colors that fascinated audiences 
and added a lively touch to her successful career. This movie not only highlighted Lombard's talent, but also showed how Technicolor could make stories more vibrant. In a different story in 1964, Hedda Hopper got caught up in a legal dispute initiated by Michael Wilding. The lawsuit, based on Hopper's book, explored controversial claims about Wilding's personal life. Seeking $3 million in damages, Wilding aimed to clear his name and protect his reputation from the implied accusations. The courtroom drama that unfolded shed light on the challenges faced by public figures in the entertainment world. Despite the legal complexities, Hopper and Wilding eventually settled, with Hopper agreeing to pay $100,000 to put an end to the heated case. While this resolution involved a financial compromise, it had a lasting effect on how people viewed celebrity gossip and the potential consequences of unproven allegations. The convergence of these two stories, one filled with technicolor brilliance and the other marred by legal battles, provides a glimpse into Hollywood's golden era. Carol Lombard's technicolor debut remains a memorable moment in cinematic history, while the legal clash involving Hedda Hopper and Michael Wilding serves as a cautionary tale about the influence and responsibility of storytelling in the public eye. Isn't it fascinating how sometimes success doesn't lead to more opportunities? Take, for example, the movie Nothing Sacred. It was the first time the director, William O. Wellman, used Technicolor, a cool new technology for making movies colorful. Even though the movie did well, it didn't open up more chances for Wellman to use Technicolor again. It's like a missed chance for him. But the movie is still important because it showed early on how color could be used in films. It reminds us that sometimes things in art don't go as planned. Nothing sacred might not have given Wellman the big break he hoped for, but it's still remembered for its colorful scenes in the history of movies. And people still enjoy watching it today. In a twist that surprised many, the 1937 movie wasn't actually filmed in Technicolor as believed. Despite being advertised as a color film, it was shot in black and white. This fact was hidden until later, revealing a deceptive marketing strategy employed by the studio. This revelation shocked audiences and added an unexpected layer to its history. The movie tells the story of a small town woman who is misdiagnosed with a fatal illness by a New York City newspaper reporter seeking a sensational story. The plot takes a tragic turn when she falls in love with the reporter, only to discover the truth about her supposed illness. This tale explores themes of deception, love, and redemption in a powerful narrative. Despite its misleading marketing, the film remains notable in cinema history. Its exploration of moral ambiguity and the consequences of dishonesty resonated with audiences, making it a thought-provoking piece of storytelling that continues to be studied and analyzed by film enthusiasts. It's often said that success in Hollywood can come with its own set of challenges. One such story that highlights this is that of a talented actress whose career, unfortunately, took a downward turn. Despite her initial fame, she faced personal struggles with alcoholism and passed away prematurely. The sad turn of events serves as a reminder of the harsh realities that can lurk behind the glamour of showbiz. Her fans and the industry mourn the loss of her potential, showing the toll that fame can take on individuals. This story, once a tale of hope and entertainment, now stands as a sobering reminder of the human struggles that accompany the pursuit of artistic dreams. It reminds us that the journey to fame isn't always glitter and gold.